Alright, so we're back um, on Unit 5 still, and this is a calculator allowed question from um, Google, or from AP Classroom, and I'm not going to show a lot of the work because it can be done in the calculator. Just know that on the actual test that they are going to probably require you to show work on questions like this. So it won't technically be a calculator allowed question. It'll be one... Um, where the calculator is available for you, but you still have to show the work. So anyway, we want to find the open intervals um, on from negative 1 to 3, and where the graph is concave up. And we're given the second derivative, so that is good. So um, because of the way this problem is, um, it is a calculator question because finding where that second derivative is zero would be extremely difficult to do without a calculator. So there are, in that interval, there are, looks like four places where the second derivative is zero and it is when x is zero, 1.253 and two point, oops, hold on, let me move over just a tad. 2.171 and 2.802. All right, and then we can just use the calculator to plug in numbers between negative 1 and 0. And when you do, you get negative um, between 0 and 1.253. You also get negative. This interval is positive. This one is negative, and this one is positive. And I didn't, when I did this problem, I didn't actually um, plug in values. I just looked at the graph of the function and saw if it was graphed above or below the x-axis. And that's how I decided if that um, section was positive or negative. So, um, like I said before many times, is a number chart can be used to show your work. And that is acceptable, but it is not acceptable reason or acceptable justification to just stop right there or to not explain why you're given those um, open intervals. So uh, we would want to write a statement that the graph of F is concave up on, and then we would give our interval where we have a positive second derivative, so that's going to be from 1.253 to 2.171 and 2.802 to 3. And again, like I said, that we would need to tell why, and that is because f double prime of x is positive in those intervals. All right. All right, for part B, we want to know if f has a f has a relative maximum or minimum um, or neither at x equals 1. Now, I didn't read the question, but it we're given several things. Um, but we are given that f prime of 1 is 0. And then we're given our second derivative. So because f prime of 1 is 0, it is a critical number or a critical point, and which means that it could be a relative maximum, a relative minimum. And so um, because what we're given is the second derivative, we're going to use the second derivative test. And the second derivative test says that if a number is a critical point and um, the second derivative is positive, then um, that means the function is concave up and then that's going to be a minimum. And then if the second derivative is negative, the function is concave up, I mean concave down, and um, that point would be a maximum. All right, so let's write it out in words. So we would say because you have to give the, all the conditions. The first condition is that um, the number you're testing is a critical number. So the f prime of one is zero. And 
I have double prime of 1, and then we could just get that straight from the calculator. So it's negative 0 0.540, and that is hmm, that is less than 0. It's negative. All right, and then, or, um, then what we could do, we need to make sure we mention the second derivative test. So by the second derivative test, f has a relative maximum. And then for C, um, we know, um, okay, this one is kind of weird. We do have to use this, um, we're going to use the mean value theorem. Um, so the mean value theorem, the conditions are that the function is um, continuous and differentiable on the interval, um, or continuous on the closed interval, um, differentiable on the open interval and it basically says if, if that ha if that's the case then there is some point um, where the instantaneous rate of change equals the average rate of change okay and is this kind of a weird way to use the mean value theorem but it's, it's the only choice that we have and it tells us to use, to use the mean value theorem so I'm gonna write just reiterate that f prime of zero is zero. Sorry, f prime of one is zero. All right, and we want to show that f prime of negative one cannot be equal to two point five. So let's say if f prime of negative one equals two point five, then the average rate of change. negative 1 to 1 of f prime would be found by using the slope formula. So we would have um, f prime of 1 minus f prime of negative 1, and then we would subtract the 1 minus negative 1 in the denominator. Okay, so f prime of 1 we know is 0. We're trying to show that f prime of negative 1 cannot be 2.5. So we'll just go ahead and put that in, and then that's going to give you 2. So the average rate of change is going to be negative 1.25. All right, and then what I did is I, I got on the calculator and I looked at the graph. And um, on that interval from negative 1 to 1, the graph never got down to negative 1.25. So there's no way um, that f prime of negative 1 could be 2.5. So... Um, we need to make sure we list the conditions. So since f prime is continuous on negative 1 to 1 and differentiable on negative 1 to 1. Now it's important, it's continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. By the mean value theorem, there would be a number C in the interval. negative 1 to 1 such that f double prime of c equals negative 1.25. Because when we find the average rate of change of f prime, that does give you f double prime, or an estimation for f double prime. So, 
like I said, when I looked at the graph, it didn't happen. So, however, <laughs> by looking at the graph <laughs> of f double prime of x, there is no number c. such that f double prime of c equals negative 1.25. Therefore, f prime of negative 1 cannot equal 2.5. Okay, so for d, we're going to find if f has a point of inflection at 0. So we're going to need to go back to the sign chart that we started with. And we only need part of it. And we already know that for f double prime, we get negative in this um, section and negative in this section. So for 0 to be a point of inflection, then the second derivative would need to change signs on each side of it, and it doesn't. So we would say because f double prime of x does not change signs, at x equals 0, the graph of f does not have a point of inflection there. Right. But we could say, if they asked, that there is a point of inflection when x is 1.253, because the second derivative changes from negative to positive, there's also one at 2.171 and one at 2.802.